You're probably wondering why you're listening to an orientation when you don't go to one for your optometrist's office or your orthodontist's office. But most people's experience with chiropractic is fairly traditional. And you found out that we're different than a traditional chiropractor. And for you to get the best out of this experience, you need to know more about it. The more you understand something, the more that you value it. It would be like if you went out and bought a $2,000 computer and all you thought that it did was to email. And then you found out that you're able to Skype with your grandkids across the world or download movies, listen to music. That value then starts to increase, right? The same is true with corrective chiropractic. Today, people's health is very disconnected and skewed. We've been conditioned partially because of that, but in this video, what we're gonna cover might challenge the way that you've ever thought about health and how you look at it overall. And we need to cover why you need to have this different perspective on health and what you need to do to get the best out of your care in our office so that when you're in our office, you're on that table, you know why you're here. And so we don't have to have that lengthy conversation with you every time. We want you to experience your checkup and correction in a reasonable amount of time. We don't want you to spend two hours every time that you come in to know the value and understand why. The other important thing is that we want you to know that even during the correction, and the checkup that it's still going to be very important when you're in the office and more so when you're outside of the office and what's happening after that. But everyone likes to live a moderately healthy life. Do you want to avoid things like cancer, heart disease, arthritis, and diabetes? These are not contagious diseases. These are actually lifestyle diseases. We've been taught that our genetics is a reason that we're having all of these diseases an increase, but unfortunately that's not true. We do have control over our health. 75 to 80% of the diseases today are actually preventable. 50% of it is gonna be the knowledge about lifestyle and how we can have better health. The other 50% is gonna be about the action and the implementation that we're gonna go over. The other thing that you may wanna avoid when it comes to degenerative diseases is medications. Now we're not anti-medication here, but when it comes to events that are life-threatening and traumatic, they save people's lives. But let me ask you this question, who's healthier? one that has more medication in their cabinet at home or less. So I think we can all agree that less medication equals better health. Our goal is to put health into context for you, for you to know what happens when you come into the office, but more importantly, what to do outside of the office. The corrections that are made in the office are very important, but other things that you're doing outside of the office, which we'll go over, will help you to aid your health in a better direction. Nothing would drive us more crazy to know that we didn't tell you what you needed to know to help you make a better decision. We're not concerned with the decisions that you make. We're concerned that we didn't provide you with the knowledge to make those decisions. How long do you think the human body is designed to live? 120 years. The average life expectancy today is 75 to 85 years, depending on if you're female or male. We are living longer, not just due to medical care, but food supply, better resources, and better hygiene practices. And the other thing we need to note is that we're not living as healthy, but the ones that are living longer, some of their character traits are moving more, like this lady pictured here, who's actually 93 years old. We are designed to live a very long time with a high quality of life. Interesting enough is chronic rates of disease continue to climb here in the US. It's not genetic lifestyle choices and environmental things that we are exposing ourselves to. Not suggesting that we never have a bag of chips. We are suggesting that your health is all about probability and the totality of life choices. You're probably going to live a pretty long life, but if you don't make good choices on a consistent level, then you have a higher risk of dying earlier with more diseases and require more medication. You're probably not gonna feel good and not be happy about that. It's all about choices you've made and your choices matter. The biggest misnomer, what is health? If this person is healthy or sick, how would you determine one from the other? Well, we'll tell you how somebody feels. We want to give you the actual answer. Health is not how you feel. Imagine if we were going out for dinner and we ate some really bad food and then all of a sudden your body started to sweat and then you started to throw up. Is that a healthy response or an unhealthy response? It's a healthy response because your body is liquefying and getting any of the toxins out of your body. That is a healthy response. Anyone know of someone that felt good but then got diagnosed with cancer? Or they felt good and they had a massive heart attack? How can we say that feeling good is the criteria for health? It's just not logical nor scientific. Actual answer is, 
Physiologists tell us health is how the body functions, how it works. The only way to know how it works is to test it, to measure it. And that's why when you came in, we said, I know what you're saying, but most of the things that you're telling us is not your real problem. They're what we call collateral damage. Let's measure you and see what's happening. That's why you go to your physician to get your blood work done, to measure. Real health is every cell functioning at 100%. And we'll talk about how you get that. Here's the process. You don't go from 100% health to death overnight, but that's what people think. Poor Bill, he died suddenly of a massive heart attack or stroke. He was so healthy. Let me ask you this question. If Bill was so healthy, why did he die? I'll tell you why, because it was a gradual process that happened over well before symptoms ever showed up. Now that's the hard truth to hear, but we are somewhere on this scale and we are more concerned about where and which direction you're moving towards versus where you are. And our goal is to introduce certain habits to move you towards health. Look where symptoms show up. They are not at the start, they are at the end. My heart cells work great, and now my heart cells are malfunctioning. But if I did a certain test, you would be able to see the changes in blood work, not necessarily be able to feel that your heart cells aren't working. Now we have measurable heart disease, and now we have the first sign of heart disease. The disease comes before the symptom. Imagine if you start making lifestyle changes here, like saying, I'll brush my teeth when my tooth hurts well after a cavity has been there. Or you can start brushing them when you have teeth. Get the difference? So how do we get these cells working right? Let's talk about something that that's not your spine or nerve system, but I'll bring it all back together, so please hang in there. Take your plants and stop giving them food, water, and sunlight. What's going to happen to them? They're not gonna function 100%. Exactly, and we can put them on this scale. As long as they have everything they need, they will function optimally. As soon as you take away what the plant needs, it starts to malfunction. You may not see it right away, but there's some signs of distress that might show up, such as browning and wilting of the leaves. You leave it long enough, the plant starts to disease. So when would be the right time to actually provide the plant with everything that it needs? Right away in the beginning to keep it nourishing and growing, or wait till the signs of distress show up? Get the idea? It's no different, we're trained to think the same way with our bodies, to have a reactive approach of treating symptoms versus a proactive approach of building and maintaining health. So how do we get cells working correctly? This is where our neurostructural restoration process begins. We'll show you what you need every day, every week, regardless of how you're feeling. You may have consulted us because of your low back pain or arthritis or headaches. Whatever reason brought you in here at the end of the day, the whole point in checking your structure is to make sure it works right. Tough question. Let's say you came in one day and you're feeling awesome, but I find a subluxation in your spine. Should I correct that subluxation even though you're feeling awesome? Of course, the subluxation is bad and it's compromising something your body needs. Normal communication, regardless of how you feel. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little bit more difficult for you. Let's say you come in, you feel terrible. You lie down on the table and you're like, I can't wait for my correction today because it's gonna make my headache that I've had all day feel better. Let's say we come in, we check your spine, we find zero subluxations. Now in the beginning, it's probably not gonna be that way, but let's say for this instance, it is. If I don't find any subluxations, am I gonna make any corrections on that visit? Absolutely not. Zero subluxations means zero corrections, even if you feel terrible. Not every problem you have is a subluxation. Whether you are fit or not, you still require movement every day. Whether you're tired or not, you still require sleep. Think of your health like a bank account. These are the things that we're going to start teaching you about. We've designed workshops to go more in depth on how not to recreate the problem at the spine and the nervous system. The first one is gonna be think by design on how to manage stress. This is a big component on how your body handles stress. The second requirement is move by design. Movement, we're going to teach you corrective care exercises. You'll have access to these and know how to do these at home, at work, or wherever. The next requirement is eat by design. We're going to teach you what to eat to bring down inflammation in the body to make the cells capable of regenerating optimally. As inflammation is up, the breakdown of your body follows. Movement, subluxation, and even how we handle stress all contribute to this inflammation process. Once you get all those requirements, movement, fuel, the nerve system in place, a healing process takes effect. 
the body can actually repair itself optimally. It's important to know where you are in your case because each of these processes and healing are different, especially from the adjustment. This is important. When we make a correction, it's connecting that communication system. And what happens in your body is a whole healing process. Let's say your spine has shifted forward and the ligaments have to change, the muscles and all the tissues have to change as well. One correction does not make those changes. What it does is it signals to the brain that it is time to change and then your body has to go through this process. It literally heals from the inside out. Have you ever had a cut and you notice how it forms a scab and then eventually the scab goes away? That's your body healing itself. We don't really think about all those things and it's actually pretty amazing when you do. Now, this is important when you're asking yourself, how much progression can I make? Constant turnover happens all the time with your cells. It's called mitosis, old cells replacing new ones. This is a process you are gonna go through. So what's a good timeline to start thinking? Start thinking months and years, whether fitness, nutrition, or corrective care you're going through, all will take time. So we've already walked you through the 101 with your spine and your nervous system, vertebrae, subluxation, nerves, tests, and correction. So what we didn't talk about on day one was how does this happen? How do you get subluxated? What are you guys doing every day that's causing this problem over and over? Because again, you can come in, we can make a great correction for you, but if we send you back out to do the same thing that you've been doing, you are just recreating the problem. So let's talk through this. Here's what happens. One of the most important areas we will focus on is the very top part of your spine. This is called your atlas. And you'll think, my back hurts, why are you focusing on my neck? Well, this is most likely where the problem began. The top of the spine shifts. What do you think could be one or two things that would cause a subluxation? So what can cause a subluxation? A fall, it could be sitting long hours, even emotional stress. And what's important to realize about this is when you start doing better and feeling better as you're going through care, you're gonna look at us and say, so we've corrected the problem. And we're gonna say, yes, just don't recreate it. So let me ask you, how many times do kids fall down? The spine is very delicate in the early years of life and its neurological development loses that position and shifts at the top of the spine. When that happens, everything in your body compensates for that. So let's walk through that process. There are three major things that cause subluxation. We need to understand these because you are doing parts of all of them. Number one, physical stress. Sitting, driving in cars, falls, motor vehicle accidents, traumas. Physical stress means stress on the body. The spine can't withstand that stress. The spine loses that position. That's a subluxation. Now the other two are major stressors that maybe you don't think about and we're constantly doing them to create subluxations. One of them is emotional stress, most difficult to understand. So let's ask, have you ever had a stressful day? Do you feel more or less tension in your muscles? When you have emotional stress that is difficult for your body to manage, your brain activates those muscles that support your body and then builds tension. Guess what those muscles are attached to? your spine. That's why you don't move as well when you're under emotional stress. The spine loses its position and becomes subluxated. The third one is chemical stress. Our environment, the foods we eat, smoking, taking medications. This activates the neurological system and affects our brain and our brain is controlling our muscles and our muscles attach to the spine again. All this links back together. The stronger the spine is, the less likely it'll become subluxated. The better your spine moves, the less it has the risk of subluxating. The more you don't do those things, the more likely it becomes subluxated. Most of the time you don't feel where your shifts are at. How many times have you come into the office and thought that you had a subluxation here, but when we went to check and correct you, you had a subluxation over here. It doesn't necessarily mean that where you're feeling the pain is where we're gonna make the correction at. So here's what happens. Your spine is supposed to move, and when it becomes subluxated, it stops moving. The next thing that happens is the brain gets information and says, oh, that's supposed to move, and then sends information to muscles around the spine to activate them to pull harder and harder. Remember from your advanced palpation tests, they show how much harder the muscles are working. That's inflammation or swelling of the tissues as seen here. If the muscle pulls on the spine more than a day or so, that creates inflammation. So that's why when we palpate, 
and we analyze the spine, sometimes you go, there is a subluxation, I can feel that. What you can feel is the inflammation. So yes, you can feel inflammation and yes, you can feel sensitivity, but here is where the real problem is. The piece of the puzzle is where all the real damage occurs. The brain says, since this is a problem, I'm going to try and fix it. And since it's not working, I'm going to keep trying and trying. It ends up using an extreme amount of abnormal resources and energy that could be used elsewhere for things of much more importance like digesting ability, immune system function, sleep regulation, and energy distribution. Subluxation goes far beyond an ouch or a pain feeling in your spine. It's affecting your whole brain and organ systems. So why would you bring your kid to a corrective care chiropractor? A subluxation can happen in an infant and the effect as we see here is only many decades later that we notice it. For every inch forward, the weight of the head increases an additional 10 pounds. This stresses and strains the structure of the spine. It didn't start just in your 40s, 50s, 60s. It started earlier on. We didn't take structural radiographs of you, but if we did, you could see as the spine loses its healthy structure, the impact it has on the neural canal or core. This is why we promote raising healthy kids than trying to fix damaged adults. So a couple pieces. The reason we've centralized the corrective process around this shift in your spine is because what the research is telling us. Yes, your subluxation started a long time ago, and yes, it's affected your body and your brain, but if you get started, get measurable changes, here's what we know as you age. The group or population that has severe anterior head shift or hyperkyphosis has increased mortality rates. So when we talked about health before, you get the idea it's not about my back hurts here or doesn't hurt there. It's about the overall function. Your spine is a central organ to your body and it's vital that you take care of it in the same way that you brush and take care of your teeth regardless of how they're feeling. The goal in the first stage is to establish a better pattern. Most people don't notice changes right away in the first stage. There's a set number of weeks and frequency to establish this pattern. We have to get you through this pattern and get you out of this pattern. The other three pieces, move by design, eat by design, think by design, we're going to teach you all of those through our workshops. We have tickets for you, your spouse, and your significant other. If you can get yourself here, you've done the hard part. If you can correct this pattern, engage in more movement, it doesn't have to be rigorous exercise routine, just more movement like walking, change your fuel, help how stress affects your body, you have set the perfect foundation to get you moving in a healthier direction. As you go through this process, we want the long-term benefit for you to function better and not just the short-term of feeling better. We're really excited about your health journey. And we wanna thank you for watching this orientation and we hope that you learned something valuable.